In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the, uh, the, the Lord be with you. <laughs> Christopher and Christine, the church shares your joy and warmly welcomes you. Together with all of your family and friends, as today in the presence of God our Father, you establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership May the Lord hear you on this day of your joyful day. May he send you help from heaven and protect you. And may he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill every one of your prayers. Let us pray. O oh God, who in creating the human race willed that man and wife should be one, Join, we pray, in a bond, uh, joined in, we pray, in a bond of inseparable love. These your servants who are to be united in the covenant of marriage, so that as you make their love fruitful, they may become, by your grace, witnesses to charity itself. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. And I invite the congregation to please be seated. Our bride and groom to find your place, and, <clears throat> and I invite you to listen first to the Lord speak to us through our scripture readings, and I invite our first reader, Michael, to come forward. A reading from the book of Tobit. On their wedding night, Tobiah arose from bed and said to his wife, Sister, get up. Let us pray and beg our Lord to have mercy on us and to grant us deliverance. Sarah got up and they started to pray and beg that deliverance might be theirs. They began with these words. Blessed are you, O God of our fathers. Praise be your name forever and ever. Let the heavens and all your creation praise you forever. You made Adam and you gave him his wife Eve to be his help and support. And from these two human, from these two, the human race descended. You said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Let us make him a partner like himself. Now, Lord, you know that I take this wife of mine, not because of lust, but for a noble purpose. Call down your mercy on me and on her and allow us to live together to a happy old age. They say together, Amen, Amen. The word of the Lord. and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. Praise of him is always in my mouth. In the Lord my soul shall make its boast. The humble shall hear Stand 
see the goodness of the Lord. The angel of the Lord is encamped around those who fear him to rescue them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed the man who seeks refuge in him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we ought to put up with the failings of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please our neighbor for the good, for building up. For Christ did not please himself. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to think in harmony with one another, in keeping with Christ Jesus, that with one accord you may be with one voice to glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome one another, then, as Christ welcomed you, for the glory of God. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it came from, although the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs in Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord.
So we're finally here on this day, and uh, although uh, there's been many moving parts, everything has aligned, and we're finally here for this momentous occasion. And uh, there's these two images that I usually share with couples for, uh, we usually start in the, way in the beginning and, and marriage prep in their first meeting, but uh, they're the two images that I, I always, in every meeting that we have, even on their wedding day, we go back to. The very first uh, uh, image of God and how he has revealed himself to us, particularly in the Christian tradition, is that God in himself is a family of persons. We have uh, God the Father, all that he is, all that he has, his entire essence and being. He gives it all to the Son, and the Son receives that gift to the Father, and in that same moment gives all of himself, all that he is, all that he has, his entire essence and being back to the Father, the ancients really struggled. How in the world do we describe that kind of canonic, self-emptying love? And they finally, uh, it was revealed to them uh, to, to refer to it as the Holy Spirit, the Holy Breath. So we get that image of God the Father breathing out all that he is, and the Son inhaling, breathing out all that he is, and this to and fro. And that love between the Father and the Son, as we say, uh, proceeding from them, is so strong it takes on a whole person, a whole character of its own, becomes that uh, which uh, gives life and sustains all things in that love. So that's the first image. That's God and his very essence at who he has revealed himself. The second is how in the world would we even participate in so great a mystery? And so the second image is that in the fullness of time, God himself made a marriage between heaven and earth, particularly through our humanity and his divinity, that we could even share in that divine life. And those are the two images that God puts before us and in this wonderful gift of, of marriage that he gives us. And what I uh, love about the, uh, the scripture readings is we have uh, in our first reading from, from Tobit, we have that couple on their wedding night who understand that. And they may not understand it in the fullness, but they say to one another, let us pray to the Lord our God. And you can just get that image of this couple realizing that a marriage is more than just between them, but it also is between them and God. It's a, it's a participation in this greater mystery. We see uh, uh, Jesus in the wedding feast at Cana. He doesn't have this disdain for marriage. He actually has this profound love, and we can see that through all of his teachings. He's particularly harsh on marriage because it's so important to him. It's so important uh, in what God invites us to. So he never wants to cheapen it. He always wants to put that challenge. And just like in the wedding feast of Cana, whenever we feel uh, like uh, we ourselves are giving beyond our means and we don't know how we can uh, give any more, we're going to run out of what it is that we're providing and trying to uh, uh, provide for our spouse or all the responsibilities that are uh, put on us. We know that we can turn to the Lord and that he can do so much with that. We're going to see these, uh, mis uh, the, the, the mysteries of these two images of God come before us uh, right here in the mystery of the love between this couple that he has formed and been leading on this journey for a very long time. In just a moment, uh, Christopher is going to give all of himself, all that he is, all that he has, uh, and, uh, uh, the, and, the and he's going to give all of himself to Christine, the best he can do on this side of heaven. Christine's going to receive that gift of Christopher. She's going to entrust herself to him, and she's going to, in turn, give all of herself, all that she is, all that she has, and uh, the best that she can do on this side of heaven. And then and, uh, we're going to call down the Holy Spirit in the ancient nuptial blessing. We're going to call down that Holy Spirit, God's uh, love and sustaining and, and uh, God's uh, God's own love, that Holy Spirit, that these two would become one in the home that they are forming. So uh, I, don't, I can't tell you what uh, God has in store for you, but uh, calling down the Holy Spirit and the two becoming one in this family that you're forming, uh, whatever God's plans are for you in uh, creating a family of your own and ennobling this world, sharing that canonic love of God's own divine life and how he's going to manifest that in you and how you're going to share that love with the world. 
but know that there's no other place that we would rather be than right here at the altar where God gives all of himself to us. Whenever we, through the ups and downs, through the challenges and through the joys, through the thanksgivings, through, through it all, will come time and time again right here in front of this altar or a altar where Christ gives all of himself to us to, to always sustain us and give us the graces that we need to live this Christian life. I'm going to invite us to just take a moment of silence before we see this great mystery uh, come uh, alive right here before us. At this time, I'm going to invite our bride and groom to come forward, followed by our wedding party to join us here at the altar. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the, of the church's minister and in this community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ, Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Christopher and Christine, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? And are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? Since it is your intention to enter into this covenant of holy matrimony, I now invite you to turn towards one another, joining your right hands as you declare your consent before God and his church. Christopher, repeat after me. I, Christopher, take you, Christine, I, Christopher, take you, Christine to, be my wife. to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and to honor you all the days of my life. Christine, repeat after me. I, Christine, take you, Christopher, I, Christine, take you, Christopher to, be my husband. to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love you and to honor you all the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessings within you. What God joins together, let no one put asunder. And I'm going to ask for the rings to be presented. May the Lord bless these rings, which you will give each other as a sign of your love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
And Christopher, repeat after me. Christine received this ring. Christine received this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And Christine, repeat after me. Christopher received this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And at this time, I invite us to all stand and I invite Joe jo to come forward. As the first thing we do for this, this new couple is to pray for them. Poor, Chris oh, I'm sorry. Poor Christine and Christopher, we pray that their love may grow deeper each day, and may that love strengthen and comfort them on their journey through life together. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the gift of friendship. We pray for the families and friends of Christine and Christopher who have come near and far, and the ones who are unable to make the trip. May the Lord reward them for their goodness and kindness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May all the married couples here today be reminded of the joy of their own day. May they give thanks for the happiness they have known, and may each day find them more devoted to each other than the last. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We remember the smiles, the laughter, and love of those who have gone before us, especially Christopher's parents, Charles and Lucia Mose, and Christine's brother, Nick, who would love to have shared in the joy and happiness of this day. We thank God for the happy memories they have left us with us, and may God one day unite us again. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those affected by COVID-19, cancer, and other illnesses, may God grant health to the sick, strength to those who care for them, and comfort to the families and salvation to all the ones who have died. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gifts of life and good health, which we so often take for granted, may we always appreciate these gifts and may bring us closer to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Graciously pour out upon this husband and wife, O Lord, the spirit of your love, to make them one heart and one soul, so that nothing whatever may divide those you have joined, and no harm come to those you have filled with your blessings. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And at this time, I invite you to please be seated and for our wedding party to find their places. to the feast of heaven and earth, come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Oh, come and sit at my table. Sinners are friends. I wait to welcome the lost and long me to share the cup of my love. Come to the feast of heaven and earth. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need table of plenty. 
without money. Come to drink without price. My feast of gladness will fill your spirit with faith and fullness of life. Come to the feast of heaven and death. Come to the table of plenty. God will provide for all that we need here at the table of plenty. Please stand and pray, brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all this holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offerings made on the occasion of this sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you have forged the covenant of marriage as a sweet yoke of harmony and an unbreakable bond of peace, so that the chaste and fruitful love of holy matrimony may serve to increase the children you adopt as your own. By your providence and grace, O Lord, you have accomplished the wonder of this twofold design, that while the birth of children brings beauty to the world, their rebirth and baptism gives increase to the church. And so, through Christ, with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. <laughs> This time I invite you to please kneel as we ask for nothing short of a miracle that this bread and this wine become the body and blood of our Savior. <clears throat> you are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night... He was betrayed. He himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. <coughs> Mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of his Son, of your Son, and filled with the Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Raphael, our patron, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis, our Pope, Gregory, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, God Almighty Father, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please stand and at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And at this time, we'll have our ancient nuptial blessing, so I'll have our bride and groom please kneel. And dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to the Lord that on these, his servants, now married in Christ, he may mercifully pour out the blessing of his grace 
and make of, make of them one heart and love by the sacrament of Christ's body and blood, those he has joined by, holy by this holy covenant. And at this time, I invite you to please extend your right hand. O God, who by your mighty power created all things out of nothing, and when you had set in place the beginnings of the universe, formed man and woman in your own image, making the woman an inseparable helpmate to the man, that they might no longer be two, but one flesh, and taught that what you were pleased to make one must never be divided. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery that in the wedding covenant you foreshadowed the sacrament of Christ and his church. O God, by whom woman is joined to man, and that companionship they had in the beginning is endowed with the one blessing not forfeited by original sin, nor washed away by the flood. Look now with favor on these your servants joined in marriage, who ask to be strengthened by your blessing. Send down on them the grace of the Holy Spirit and pour your love into their hearts, that they may remain faithful to the marriage covenant. May the grace of love and peace abide in your daughter Christine, and let her always follow the example of those holy women whose praises are sung in the scriptures. May her husband entrust his heart to her, so that, in <clears throat> so that acknowledging her as his equal and his joint heir to the life of grace, he may show her due honor and cherish her always with the love that Christ has for his church. And now, Lord, we implore you, may these your servants hold fast to the faith, and keep your commandments, made one in the flesh. May they be blameless in all they do. And with the strength that comes from the gospel, may they bear true witness, witness to Christ before all. May they be blessed with children, prove themselves virtuous parents, who live to see their children's children. And grant that reaching at last together the fullness of years for which they hope, that they may come to the life of the blessed in the kingdom of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. And at this time, I invite you to offer one another a safe sign of peace. At this time, I invite you to please kneel, and for those who share our Catholic faith and are ready to receive the Lord in the Eucharist, you're welcome to come forward to receive communion. If you're joining us today and you do not share our Catholic faith or are not ready to receive the Lord in the Eucharist, I still invite you to come forward, and if you would cross your hands across your chest and we'll know to give you a blessing instead, or you may remain uh, in, with us in prayer in your places. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
gentle woman, quiet light, morning star, so strong and bright, gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us love. You were chosen by the Father, you were chosen for the Son. Gentle woman, quiet light, morning star, so strong and bright, gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom. Teach us love. Blessed are you among women. Blessed in turn, all women too. Blessed. Morning star, so strong and bright, gentle mother, peaceful dove, teach us wisdom, teach us love. Let us stand and pray. <clears throat> By the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with your loving favor, favor what in your providence you have instituted, so as to make of one heart and love those you have already joined in this holy union and replenished with the one bread and the one chalice through Christ our Lord. Amen. And at this time, I invite the wedding party to come for our final blessing. With this final blessing, there are three invocations. So the Lord be with you. And, and may God, the eternal Father, keep you of one heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. Amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. Amen. And may you be witnesses in the world to God's charity so that the afflicted and the needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the, into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. Amen. And, may the blessed, and may Almighty God bless all of you who are here gathered, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may kiss your bride.
And let me be the first to introduce to you Mr. and Mrs. Christopher Mose. <laughs> 